Okay, okay. Who's this guy and why has he pulled the old yoink and twist from one of Uncle Dane's most popular videos? Well, despite there being countless videos on how to get better at medic, how to heal more efficiently, how to quickly remember every line from Meet the Medic and repeat the Mad Nauseam and Casual Serbs until get kicked and ultimately banned, there is very little in the way of helping new medics deal with the various classes they come up against and how to get out of jams. Medic is an extremely unique class within TF2. He's the only healer in the game, aside from the engineer of course with his dispenser, but I mean let's be honest, a stationary healing source with a maximum health of 216 which has constantly been focused down by spies and almost every damaged healer in the game isn't really a strong contender to hold the spot as the second healer in the game. But I can see you in the comments already, TF2 fan Billy 2012 so sure, Engineer is also a healer, but for all intents and purposes, Medic is the king when it comes to dishing out heals to your team. And this is the Medic's key problem. He is the king. I doubt anyone, particularly from the competitive side of TF2, will deny that Medic is the most important, or certainly at least the most mandatory class needed in a team composition. His ability to heal combined with his supercharge marks him as a true indicator, more often than not, of whether a team wins or loses, especially at high tiers of play. So naturally, even in casual play, the Medic is often THE class most semi-competent and up players attempt to kill first. Now this video is not created to suggest that you should go out and battle Medic your way through every class and avoid healing your teammates at all costs. It exists to hopefully provide you with tips to hopefully get out alive in the unfortunate circumstance where you might be forced into a 1v1. We're first going to go over general tips and tricks of surviving as a medic, then moving on to class specific 1v1 situations. Just something to note, you might find a large emphasis being put on the crossbow and on the ubersaw. This is because at the time of writing, and indeed through most of TF2's life, these weapons continue to hold their own as supreme weapons for the primary and melee slots. Others will be mentioned, but those are the strong main weapons, which honestly makes Medic's gameplay unusually stale, which might well be another video. Anyway, alright, here we go. If you watch nothing else in this video, this section will give you a huge leg up when it comes to being a better, longer lasting medic. This may be a hot take, but the strongest skill of a good medic isn't their ability to heal. It's their ability to move, the ability to assess risk, and ultimately their ability to never die, Heroes then their ability die. to heal. A medic dealing an average amount of healing but surviving the entire round to consistently provide this healing is more beneficial to his team than an efficient, prolific healer who overextends and doesn't assess risk and dies often, leaving their team without a healer for often up to 30 to 60 seconds. Now movement's important to every class, but given Medic has very little in terms of both offense and defensive capabilities, movement itself almost becomes a weapon for him. Imagine good movement taking up an invisible weapon slot, allowing you to escape sniper sightlines, annoy spies out of backstabs, surf off explosives and air blasts, heal from optimal positions, tank damage for your vulnerable friendly teammates in buildings, and just generally make a nuisance for the enemy team. All of these may be explained in detail in another video, and certainly a lot of these have been explained in videos by others. But the key point is to know that you should never be in a position where you need to 1v1 someone. With good movement and positioning, you will rarely find yourself battling in a 1v1. So how do you get good movement? Jump. No, seriously, jump. There's really nothing else. Okay, I'm oversimplifying, but what I mean is to be constantly hopping. I would suggest binding jump to your scroll wheel and learning how to bunny hop more specifically. This is actually quite easy to learn in Source games, especially in TF2. Being able to bunny hop and air strafe will not only allow you to move faster, it will also allow you to move more unpredictably, which is perfect for a medic who is constantly being focused down. Now there are of course caveats to this. Jumping is dangerous. Getting hit can often mean your velocity stops and you're essentially a floating sitting duck. I can't tell you the number of times I've jumped, been damaged and somehow become stuck in a position knowing I was going to die and actually dying 9 out of 10 times. Bear this in mind when bunny hopping in close quarters or in areas where you are likely to get snagged on something. Another tip for movement involves the scout. Healing a scout with any medi gun will result in you matching his speed of 133%, an increase of 26%. This often means getting you out of danger faster and just generally makes you harder to hit, especially when combined with bunny hopping. Positioning goes hand in hand with movement and you will naturally get better with active practice. Always follow my number one rule of medic positioning. Find your team. It sounds simple, but often you will find yourself rightfully running to the front line just to find your teammates completely missing and then instantly dying. Be by their side no matter where they are. Much like the offside rule of soccer, or football depending on where you are, this is a TF2 video, keep your arguments about this semantic aspect of linguistics in the comments, think of yourself as playing offense and the defense is also on your team. You should very rarely, if at all, be in front of your own team. It is often tempting to push out in front of them to encourage them to push out with you, but don't do this. Stay behind your front line of teammates as much as you can while keeping an eye on flanks and open areas. Generally as medic you don't want to back yourself into a corner in order to avoid explosive classes, but you don't want to be so in the open that you invite spies and other classes into your back line. Use your comms effectively to warn about what is happening behind the front line. 
You also need to be constantly making calculations in your head about when it is necessary to chase someone down to finish them off as many, as this is sometimes more valuable than healing your team in that given moment. It is however extremely rare that the situation is preferable to you dying, so always remember when playing medic, your survival is more important than anything else, and often more important than any other class's survival. Speaking of other classes, don't take metal packs. Your engineers absolutely come first. Then every other class, including even the scout. You'll never need them, truly. If you do, you're using a primary too much. It's that simple. However, always take health packs if you need them. You are the top priority. Provided that you are afforded the ability to survive, you are theoretically able to deal an infinite amount of healing to others, but not yourself. Take those health packs and yell at anyone who takes them when you need them. Okay, no, but if a scout takes it, still yell at him. Also, if he takes teleporters, also when he yells medic for the thousandth time. In the same vein talking about health, Let's talk about using your health regen to protect your team. As your health regenerates on its own, oftentimes the best way to defend yourself against attacking players is to access bait damage for your team. This allows them to deal damage on your behalf while they are healthy. Once you sneak away, you can then focus on healing them as they start to take damage. Given their starting advantage, you're more than often likely to win these battles, never forcing you to take a 1v1 in the first place. Now as a final point, don't be afraid to use your uber at inopportune moments. A used uber has infinitely more chance to be useful than one that's lost when you die. If you need to get away and risk dying, pop the uber on yourself. This often ties in nicely with the uber saw as each successful hit builds 25% uber. Sometimes this is enough to push you over 100% and can be handy fighting power classes like soldier. Using an uber to get out of a situation alive is a viable option. To sum all this together, I'd highly recommend watching good medic players and critically assessing their movement and decision making. Why did they decide to chase someone? Why did they hide? Why did they let teammates die to save another? How did they approach a 1v1? Then record your own gameplay and assess to the same level and adjust. Oftentimes you might find yourself overextending, which is important to be able to identify early to curb the behavior. Ooh, tiny little head! Ooh, your gun shoots medicine! It's intimidating. You'll find yourself dying to scouts a lot. Like, a lot. <laughs> Almost all classes are technically counters to medic, but scout in particular holds this title. Especially in competitive tier 2, it's more or less the scout's role to flank around, drop the enemy medic, scream and hopefully get out of there alive. But the point usually is that if he gets the medic pick and goes down, the medic pick was far more valuable. Scouts prey on the vulnerability of their enemy and must rely on their own ability to aim a shotgun. Now this might be a stereotype, but scouts often fixate. Use this to your advantage. If you've mastered movement and positioning and you run into a scout on your own, you shouldn't really be far from your team. Let's assume they're even reasonably close by. Much like Miss Pauling's skirt, all that scout cows about right now is dropping you. Run to your team and that scout is usually in for a world of hurt. If you're in the unfortunate position of not following the number one rule of medic which is to be in the right position by your teammate's side, your best chance of survival is to mirror the scout's sporadic movement and attempt to increase distance between you and him while using your needles or crossbow. Try to use your primary fire as much as possible until the scout is literally on top of you before using your melee weapon. Always try to get away of course, but it can often be beneficial to move forward as he backs away. Similar to standing up to a brown bear, a lot of medics 1v1s come down to your ability to appear brave and scary while in actuality being a feeble little human stick. Oh, and also your ability to hit your shots. Sufficient aggression at key moments, especially towards skittish ADHD scouts, may often result in their retreat, allowing you to get away. Sometimes the scout will be so amped up on killing you that you manage to land a clean bolt and a few melee swings. It can often be useful to channel your inner spy main and use the tunnel vision of scouts to your advantage and trick stab them. Use corners to your advantage, run past them, then wait for the scout. This is essentially a matador stab for the spy, but the idea is to use Pika's advantage to hit the scout before they realize you are there. But with that being said, you're usually good. Keep in mind, however, in close range combat with a scout, it's important to look at what weapon he's using and to remember some simple stats. Scout melees typically deal 35 damage per hit with an interval of half a second. This gives him an effective DPS of 70, assuming he hits every shot. Medic on the other hand typically deals 65 damage per swing, except with the amputator at 52 damage, every 0.8 seconds, except with the ubersaw where the swing speed is every second. This gives the medic an effective DPS of between 65 to 81, assuming he hits every shot. So despite the scout superficially appearing to be a stronger melee damage dealer, given his swing speed, the medic often comes out on top in terms of actual damage. Couple this with knowing a 
scout using the Boston Basher is self-damaging, goading a scout into wildly swinging can often work in your favour, especially if you've forced him to use all six shots of his scattergun and he doesn't have time to reload. In terms of primary weapons, it is often best to do a quick crossbow melee combo. It may be that I just suck at the Blute Soldier, but syringe gun needles just suck at hitting scout effectively. His speed and agility are simply too erratic and zigzaggy to meet this a viable strategy. It is safe to say it's probably best to avoid scouts and to be on the lookout for flank routes where they might appear, alerting your team and baiting the scout into their loving arms. All right. This is actually really bad. I'm gonna mail my boot to the Kaiser with your ass around it. Soldier is a class you will see a lot as a medic, both on your team and the enemy team. You can usually tell the competent ones by those who have multiple unusual effects in their own pocket medic. The medic really does not have enough damage output nor the health to safely battle soldiers at any range really. His class is designed as such. Extreme power even at long distances at the cost of mobility and short ranged attack, unless willing to deal damage to yourself or to whip out a shotgun, removing vital utility slots in the process. There isn't much to be said for medic's offensive options when it comes to soldiers. Your crossbow is able to deal a surprising amount of damage, but when it comes down to it, the slow fire rate as well as the fairly minimal damage compared to rockets makes you a sitting duck. You might consider using something like the Blute Sauger to soak up damage as health, but it's rarely enough to combat the massive damage dealt by soldier. Your best bet may honestly be to use the Overdose, pray you're on 100% uber, and use the speed boost to get the hell away from him. I'm being facetious, but it really does just highlight how significantly the scales are tipped in the soldier's favour. One important important thing to remember, like with all classes, is to keep your distance. Well, duh, but with Soldier specifically, damage fall off from his rockets is determined by his distance from you, not from where the rocket was fired. So keeping your distance not only forces you into fewer 1v1s, but it also reduces the amount of potential damage done by his rockets. There are certain aspects to play as a medic where you can use this soldier's extreme power against him. Competent soldiers will attempt to hit you directly, especially if they're using a direct hit, but most often they'll be aiming for your feet. Use this to your advantage if you need to get away. Rocket surfing is a process not dissimilar to that of rocket jumping for the soldier himself. This is where instead of using your own rockets, you use the soldier's rockets fired at you to fly away to safety. The following tip is useful against many classes, but as medic, don't feel like you can't deal damage along with your team. Oftentimes it can be beneficial to quickly whip out your crossbow and chip damage at enemies at medium to long ranges to soften them up and or decrease the efficiency of the enemy medic. This comes in handy against soldier, especially when you have the high ground. Being able to take away from the soldier's reliable means of damage by shooting at your feet, you can often chip damage from them enough to outright kill them, or at least make them consider otherwise, allowing you to get away. Other options include shoulder peeking around corners and chipping damage at the soldier. Given his rockets take time to fire, peeking first with your crossbow all but guarantees that you're able to hit him with him being essentially defenseless until he turns the corner. As a last resort, and if you know you can't get out of a situation with a soldier, sometimes it's best to just jump in swinging, praying you did enough damage to him so that his rocket self damage will be sufficient to kill him in the end. With this being said, soldier is one class, along with most of the other power classes, where the general advice of picking your battles comes into play quite heavily. Oftentimes a low health soldier can be a quick pick for a medic, especially if he's trying to retreat, and especially if you're using the crossbow. So there is certainly something to be said for going on the offensive, either by yourself or with your team to finish off a retreating soldier, even in the heat of battle. But utilize extreme caution with this, and remember of course just how quickly a soldier can end your life, even when he is on critically low health. I toiled in God's domain! Ah! Now this advice is likely to be suitable for all classes, but I truly believe the best way to get better at fighting pirate is to play pirate and specifically target medics. What is attractive to you in this case, aside from his big burly chest? It's usually distance and helplessness. The best way to fight a pirate is to create as much distance as possible and to look as helpful to your team as possible. Much like a lonely deer cub, a lonely but close by medic is perfect prey for a pyro. It is not a particularly hot take in this day and age to suggest that Pyro isn't exactly the strongest class in TF2. There are many videos out there explaining this, but a class which is essentially useless at long ranges and only effective at short ranges by dealing consistent damage makes Pyro a difficult class to do exceedingly well with, unless using the flog and being pocketed by even the most stupid of medics. But I digress. The medic, especially when paired with the crossbow, not only has ranged ability against a Pyro, he also has significant burst damage capabilities. Aside from the obvious way of avoiding 1v1s with Pyros by simply avoiding them, deterring them from advancing is the next best thing. 
A crossbow at even medium distances to a pyro will drop a third of their health. Not only will this make them less likely to W plus M1 towards you, but they may even attempt to air blast your syringes, causing them to waste both time and ammo which could be better used damaging your team. But in the case where a pyro has appeared on top of you, your best option often isn't to run, it's to quickly stop the damage. Now why is that? The Pyro's flamethrower has a lot of variation including in flame length, speed, damage falloffs and ramp ups, but take the following quick maths. Pyro moves at 300 hammer units per second. Medic moves at 321 hammer units per second. Pyro's flame distance is dynamic and changes based on the Pyro's velocity. Assuming the most conservative case where the Pyro is standing stationary to start with, their flamethrower, not including the Dragon's Fury, fires flames at a distance of approximately 340 hammer units. Let's even say you're 200 hammer units from the pyro to start with, which is already generously far away. If you run away and they start chasing, it will take roughly 7 seconds before you are outside the pyro's reaching distance. For these distances, the flamethrower is doing an average of 87 DPS, meaning a medic at full health is dead after around 1.4 seconds, and at full overheal of 225 health is dead after around 2 seconds. This isn't even mentioning that this requires turning your back on the pyro to run forwards, meaning a backburner pyro will kill you even faster, or they could just pull out the power jack to catch up with you if need be. So it's safe to say if you are within any of these distances of a pyro, you will never outrun their damage. So, your best bet is to get as close as possible to the pyro and circle around them, violently meleeing at them, praying to get that random crit. Three melee hits are required, unless he's in the amputator where it's four, so trying to combo a one crossbow to two melee hits is your best chance at survival. But remember, one melee crit will kill a full health pyro outright. But you're still unlikely to win here. The following scenarios usually happen. Number one, the pyro kills you outright and survives. The upside here is that they're likely to be low health, making them easier targets for your team. Number two, you kill the pyro, but die from afterbirth. So, eh, you traded, but a med down over a pyro down is the better result for the pyro's team. Number three, you kill the pyro and survive the afterbirth. Nice work! But now you're low health and have to escape somehow to a health pack. Given that you were being focused down by a pyro, you're either out of position or the enemy team isn't close behind, so good luck with that. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking all is lost for the medic player, but let's look at situation number two in more detail. Afterburn does 8 damage per second for between 4 to 10 seconds, so between 32 to 80 damage is done over that time. Medic heals himself at between 3 to 6 health per second, depending on when the damage was last done. So given that he's burning, he'll only heal for 12 to 30 health over this time period. This reduces our net afterburn damage to roughly 20 to 50 damage. In order to not die to afterburn in this circumstance, you can only be hit by the Pyro's flamethrower for less than a second. However, let's see what would happen if you had the Blutsauger. Assuming you hit every needle, it deals 100 damage per second, which would heal you for 30 health per second. Now let's assume the Pyro is on top of you, dealing a max damage of 173 damage per second. They will effectively be damaging you for 143 DPS in this circumstance. It's conceivable therefore that if you create even a small amount of distance and you're confident in your aim, the Blutsauger is an extremely strong contender when it comes to 1v1ing Pyros due to its dual healing and damaging abilities and essentially rivaling the Pyro's own consistent damage dealing weapon. But remember, this would come at the cost of using your crossbow, meaning significantly gimping your ability to heal your teammates. So, the best 1v1 against a Pyro is one of long range deterrence and escapism. You first need to decide whether or not you are being trapped in fighting the pyro or if you can escape. Your effectiveness is based on being able to smash damage from a distance versus consistent flaming, so chip at them and be annoying. Don't voluntarily go near these psychos. So many bombs! Your Teutonic nurse me! Honestly, in the context of playing Medic, I see Demo as an easier version of the Pyro and a class that you might surprisingly find yourself winning against often. A key point to remember when fighting Demo Men is oddly to get as close as possible, which is easy as a fast and mobile Medic. A huge tip which sounds way too simple is to use the inverse weapon that the Demo is using at any given moment. So what do I mean? Well the Demo is a very unwieldy class to play. His weapons require either extreme accuracy and prediction as it relates to his grenade launcher, or time in order to detonate in respect to his stickies. 
so this makes him an incredibly strong medium range class and a good long range class, but at short ranges the demo's abilities start to dwindle. So as you get close to the demo to deal damage, he's often going to panic and try his hardest to drunkenly hit his grenades. Being able to dodge demo men's pipes is a skill in and of itself, one which you'll get better at by merely trying this tactic more and more and utilising bunny hopping. But dodging and weaving through his pipes, once you're within the demo range, so to speak, switch to your melee and slash away. The moment the demo switches to his melee, back up quickly and pull out your bow or needles to deal close range damage. The demo is likely to pull out his grenade launcher as he knows he cannot chase you fast enough, in which case you can go back in swinging with your melee weapon. So surprisingly, demo men are actually quite a simple matchup for a medic who can hit their shots. Demo knights, on the other hand, are an entirely different beast. Generally, I lump the annoyingness of demo knight in with scouts. If there is a competent one on the enemy team, you're likely to die to them a lot. It's just a fact. The reasoning is simply that a demo knight has both a large melee reach and a high rate of speed. Combine that with the fact he also has a strong medium range damage dealer in his primary weapon, if he's not using booties, medics are often left extremely vulnerable at all distances to demo knights. My biggest advice for them is communication above all else with your team, making sure they know one is nearby and to protect you closely. Additionally, therefore, they fall in the same category as scouts, once again, whereby you can bait them into your team in order to protect yourself. More generally, however, if you're using the vaccinator in a 1v1 with a demo, it can be useful to pop an explosive resistance bubble on yourself when approaching a demo man to reduce the potential damage, but also to allow you to potentially bait a demo man into using his stickies at an inopportune moment. Just remember that the bubble will only last as long as you have the vaccinator itself actively equipped. All in all, demo man is actually one class that you can surprisingly do well against, given the right mindset and game sense. You are... STUPID! It is good there to be giant man! Alright, let's face it. Killing a heavy is almost an impossible task for a medic. If you find yourself in close quarters alone with a heavy, you're extremely likely to lose that battle. That's just how it goes. But a good medic is an agile, resourceful one. And even the best heavies move as slowly as a 1950s Mississippi detective investigating the murder of a young black man. Unless your enemy heavy is using the Thomas Love, the heavy's minigun revving up makes noise. So use this to your advantage. The best 1v1s for a medic versus a heavy involve significant use of doors, ledges, any form of cover really. Strafing back and forth from cover at irregular intervals will allow you to chip significant damage from him, especially with the 38 to 75 base damage each bolt does, depending on the distance. Timing this particularly to when the heavy starts and stops revving his gun is incredibly effective. Usually a heavy will end up struggling to deal consistent damage, resorting to constantly revving his gun or but stationarily, but despite this being effective at damaging the heavy, you're still unlikely to kill him unless he is already on low health. Sometimes you just get lucky and deal the finishing slivers of damage needed. The key strength of this tactic nonetheless is that the frustration this continued substantial chip damage does to a heavy often causes them to retreat, allowing you to leave unscathed. But don't chase him. But let's say the fat man's extremely close, what do you do then? Much like Demo Man, getting in extremely close contact with a heavy is the best option if you're forced to fight him. His hitscan weapons rely on accuracy, accuracy which is made frustratingly more difficult to maintain when an enemy is right on top of you circling around you. Like with advice for Pyro, combining primary fire with melee hits is a strong tactic, and when not close with a heavy, can be extremely effective. Just bear in mind that the fat man at full health has 300 HP and 450 when overhealed. This makes the medic strong, yet puny 65 damage per swing, take 5 hits to kill a full health heavy, and 7 at full overhill. Combo that with the fact the Ubersaur is a must have for medics, despite its swing speed of around 1 second, it will take at least 5 to 7 seconds in these instances, which is just far too much time, even when praying for crits, and the heavy will likely just kill you. With all that being said however, the best offense against heavies is to understand why you are getting yourself into situations where you have to fight them. Were they simply extremely aggressive, or more likely were you being too aggressive and getting yourself into situations that you shouldn't have? Being honest with yourself and addressing where your medic play is weakest can be extremely beneficial as it relates to battling heavy, because as you get better, facing a heavy 1v1 becomes more and more rare. You are tying my patience! Slap a poultice on that, doc! <laughs> As a medic, you're not often going to come across engineers specifically, unless in an uber push into their nest, in which case you usually have teammates with you to do the job. The most likely scenario that you're going to find an engineer in is either as a battle engi or an engi who is out of position. Uncle Day made an excellent point that medics often see engineers as a free ubersaw. The most entertaining thing about medic players when playing engineer, however, is how so many of them seem to think that an engi is basically a free ubersaw. So if you can exploit that stereotype, the med picks will literally come to you. And he's right, don't assume an engi is defenseless. However, 
If you cross paths with an out of place engineer, especially one using the Rescue Ranger, a 1v1 is quite balanced in that you both have projectile based damage dealers and your health is the same, especially with the medic auto healing. A 1v1 with an engineer without a sentry is often a battle against a less powerful but slightly more healthy scout. Treat him with respect and use the same mindset as with the scout and you're likely to come out on top. Be mindful of the engineer's secondary weapon. A wrangler is useless to an engineer without his sentry, but the short circuit can be effective against your crossbow bolt, so bear that in mind. Bear in mind good engineer players are extremely efficiency oriented and may not consider using it however as the metal cost is often not worth deleting a single crossbow bolt. This all being said, the best defense against engineer is simply to build uber and overrun him with your team, bearing in mind that the Kritzkrieg uber has no effect against buildings. Naturally a stock uber used on a power class like a heavy, soldier, demo, sometimes even pyro, is usually more than enough to take down a nest or at least a sentry. The quick fix is generally a good option with a disorganized team who is taking a lot of damage overall, but is pretty pitiful when it comes to taking down an engineer's buildings. The vaccinator however has some interesting quirks. When using a damage resistance bubble, it blocks 75% of that damage type which can be extremely effective against sentries when used on a power class. Additionally, you can pop bullet resistance bubbles on yourself and your pocket and push in before them. This makes a sentry attack you before your pocket, allowing them more time to attack the sentry and kill it without being knocked back or taking damage. The other aspect of the vaccinator can annoy engineers without even realizing. Because the vaccinator that builds uber bubbles very quickly, you can delay an engineer's upgrade process and generally waste more metal more often. The idea is by popping bullet resistance bubbles against a level 1 or 2 sentry, you can force it to shoot at you with relatively no risk of dying. This forces the engineer to need to replace the metal used in bullets before being able to upgrade his sentry gun leaving him with less metal, fewer upgrades, and more frustration overall. Finally, don't go out of your way to try and kill his buildings. Sure, you can chip damage at them from a distance, but unless they are very clearly low health, it's generally a poor idea to try and take down his buildings yourself. Even mini sentries are often not worth it. Simply stay out of their sight lines, let your team know their location, and let them deal with it while you build uber healing them. Sure, you can take down dispensers and sometimes teleporters if no one else is around, but generally just stick to your role and you'll find engineers naturally counted. Kill him! He's healing himself! The healing is not as rewarding as the hurting. Much like with the engineer, you're unlikely to be coming face to face with medics as they will be too preoccupied as you are in healing their own teammates. If you do run into a medic, they're likely also using the crossbow and ubersaw. You'll be finding yourself just chipping damage at each other from a distance using the crossbow, but in a direct 1v1 situation, let's be honest, the battle of two medics in casual is usually just a battle of whoever gets the ubersaw crit first. But assuming a situation where neither of you get crits, maybe you're playing on Uncle Topia, a lot of scout tips actually come in handy. It can be useful to chip damage at a distance first and ultimately end the battle with more swift melee hits. Especially at higher tiers of play, monitoring the uber charge level of each team's medic is quite important. In this circumstance, and in my experience, a medic can be quite intent on downing the other medic in order to ensure their team's advantage. Use this to your own advantage. Knowing where your team is, you can often bait the enemy medic into being out of position enough for your team to get a kill. Just keep in mind the other medic may be trying the same tactic on you, so don't get baited in a similar way. Overall, keep to your regular duties and you'll rarely find yourself needing to 1v1 another medic. I actually found it difficult to find footage of me 1v1ing other medics, so that proves my point. But if you do need to fight them, mind games can often play a big role in your success. My head! <laughs> Too slow, medicine woman! Ugh, sniper. The class in the game everyone loves to hate, and that sniper mains hate to love. And often for a good reason. Sniper has the unique ability in TF2 in that he can one-shot you as a medic from any range after just 0.2 seconds of scoping his weapon, with essentially nothing that you can do to stop it. Add on top of that that snipers generally will target you more than a Japanese kamikaze pilot aiming for a US naval carrier when playing sniper, and he is just an absolute ass of a class. So this simply goes back to general tips. Having good, annoying movement makes all but the most exceptional snipers miss you more often than not, but you'll still get unlucky and be insta-dead when crossing a sightline. So if you know that a sniper is watching, just avoid him. Sometimes you might find a sniper who is out of position, which makes him an easy double melee swing. Just be wary if he has Jurati, as he may be able to quickly crit you, especially if you're using the Bushwhacker or just quickscope you because you know the sniper isn't OP or anything. 
However, there is hope. If you watch my streams, I've spoken at great length about how strong the Vaccinator is and how versatile it is as a medigun. Now, it's usually wise to avoid shooting enemies just for the sake of it when your teammates need healing, but popping a bullet resistance bubble on a friendly, or even yourself, peeking out and baiting a sniper's shot, then immediately firing your own crossbow bolt back is actually a 500 IQ move. I cannot tell you the number of times the sniper frustratingly devotes his entire focus to me, being unable to kill me due to the bullet resistance, whilst ignoring the rest of my team escaping past his sightline, and sometimes even dying to my arrows. There is never a better feeling, nor a better opportunity to sharpen for it at all. I can't take any more of this insanity! You are such a bad doctor! <laughs> Alright, our final class. You're gonna come across spies a lot in TF2 as a medic. Much like scouts, it's the role of the spy to pick off important classes, such as snipers and medics, as well as sapping buildings. In order for the spy to be effective, he must backstab, which naturally means when you come across spies, it will likely be an extremely close distance, or you're already dead. Close contact with a spy is always dangerous due to trick stabs. Spy suffers from the same downfalls of medic in that his primary weapons are generally weak, although people do often discount the effectiveness of well-placed revolver shots, which can deal up to 60 damage at close range. So a competent spy will attempt to backstab you at all costs. I may be biased, but I find the hitbox and the, the hit registration of backstabs to be super janky and broken. So at all costs, avoid attempting to melee the spy, because you're likely to end up another trick stab statistic. Now, I'm not saying to avoid meleeing the spy, I mean, what else can you do? I'm simply saying that you need to pick your moments carefully. Trick stabs are extremely common and devastating when used by good spies. A good counter to this is to learn the trick stabs that spies use. There are a whole bunch of trick stabs and different names for them but the idea is to mirror and anticipate the spy's movement. For example, be mindful when following a spy upstairs. It's very easy to identify them trying to jump over your head and just as something look up and head back down the stairs, or but nullifying their stab. As you play, you will start getting a feel for when a spy has that look in his eye when he's going to try trick stabbing you. There's something about a trick stabbing spy strafing and intense attention to you which makes you question going for a melee hit. Instead, try to keep at bay with your primary weapon. You will likely find a window of confusion where the spy doesn't have his knife out or doesn't seem focused, and this is when you can melee them. Two swift swings with anything but the amputator will be sufficient to kill a full health spy, but just generally try and keep your distance from them. Alright, so you've scared off the spy. What now? The next best thing is to communicate with your team. Oftentimes, just letting your team know there is a spy around is more than enough to, if not directly kill the spy, prevent him from reaching your back for a good while. Additionally to this, your crossbow makes a satisfying crunch sound whenever hitting disguised spies, so this is especially useful across the map as you might be able to detect the spy's disguise and location and broadcast this information to your team. Now the last thing to think about is getting into the mindset of a spy. When you're playing spy, how do you get kills? You generally have a pattern of play. You hide in a corner, you wait for the coast to be clear, then you attack. Then you do it again, and again, and again. Use this knowledge to your advantage, particularly when playing high value targets like Medic. Often if you get stabbed, it's easy enough to simply remember where and how you got stabbed, then when in a similar situation, just pretend like you're not paying attention, then turn around. This is usually quite effective near spawn doors where both new and veteran spies like to hang out to get free kills. So I hope this helps somewhat. Playing Medic requires a lot of attention to do well. Keeping your eyes, ears and comms open, as well as perfecting your movement and positioning, will help you survive longer, as well as of course using various quirks of each class against them in order to win. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe, you know all that jazz, there will be more videos coming very very soon. Um, we usually have a great time over on Twitch where I stream almost every day, so chuck me a follow and join in over there. Do you have the Mind Goblin? The what? Is that a TF2 item? You can't! <laughs> uh, check the description for details. And I'll see you on the next one. Alright, peace. See you later.